As you all know, I find this story and the overall deeper meaning of Half-Life to be terrifying. The way the series subtly indicates the existential dread and the doom of humanity in the hands of a superior race has always stuck with me. In this video, I wanted to dive into Half-Life's third chapter, Unforeseen Consequences, and just how genius its level design and the message it's trying to convey is expressed seamlessly, even to this day. Modern games use the formula that Valve has set within this chapter, which to me makes it revolutionary and pivotal for the advancement of video games. So let's dive into why I love this chapter. Before Half-Life, pretty much any game under the sun had the most simplistic mechanics of running and shooting enemies on a map. The way Half-Life stood out within the FPS genre at the time was its ability to implement a scripted story as well as implement NPCs that we should care about, no matter how goofy they can be at times. This advances immersion and subtly builds the world around you the more you progress. This information is extremely important to why this chapter is so damn good because world building and the beginning of the story is expressed in the first two chapters with a long tram ride journey into the Black Mesa research facility. Here, the scientists are just going on about their regular days and are completely unaware of the catastrophe that approaches them. Do you know who ate all the donuts? I have no doubt. However, there is subtle foreshadowing that the experiment that you're about to conduct may not go smooth sailing, as you're given information about a system crash right before you arrive, as well as some of the scientists being worried about this experiment. Right off the bat, the game gives you the feeling of uncertainty, but since the obvious red flags are so brief, minuscule, or just coming from word of mouth, it's easy to just brush past it. Of course, the experiment goes completely wrong, resulting in the resonance cascade, which is where unforeseen consequences begins. The first thing I want to shed light on is just how good the atmosphere and ambience are within this chapter. You're greeted with the loud noise of the alarm and are given the aftermath of the experiment, which is a destroyed variant of the anti-mass spectrometer and the test chamber itself. Right off the bat, it's conveyed that this experiment went tits up. Now you must go where you came from. This is such a unique way of implementing backtracking into gameplay, as the pristine white aesthetic that Black Mesa had is now completely shadowed by panic inducing red lights of the alarms, as well as blood coated along the floor and the walls. The lifeless bodies of your previous colleagues are completely scattered, crushed by the malfunctioning machines and rubble. You feel the weight of the situation, grateful to have the HEV suit on. Everyone's in a state of panic as the facility is in complete shambles. Scientists are dying right in front of you and there's nothing you can do about it. It goes to show that nobody expected this experiment to go wrong on such a grand scale, which is where the grim reality sets on the player. Meeting up with two scientists who are panicking about the situation, one of them begs you to reach the surface and let everyone know that they're stranded within the facility. It is here where you encounter the first hostile NPC. Sure, you've encountered them the moment the catastrophe hit, but they didn't attack you. Instead, they just minded their own business or stared at you. However, the headcrab is hostile, but encased in broken glass. The way it attempts to frantically lunge at you with its horrid noises shows that there is no use making peace with this alien. This is important, as just after, another spawns directly in front of you, and now in an open space, so there's nothing preventing it from lunging at you. This shows that these creatures are not friendly and very dangerous. After traversing through more of the catastrophe, you pick up a crowbar and must break through this elevator door. Once again, you're reminded of the grim reality of the resonance cascade. With your only option to traverse being to climb up the ladder, you climb up and see the first armed NPC in the game, shooting down what seems to be the horrific result of the headcrab finding its host. These designs are peak horror. The use of grotesque body horror to sell their designs is such a unique touch, as there is a mouth caved open in their chest, hands mutated into sharp claws and blood all over them. The sounds they also make are just so iconic, as the headcrab is using its host's voice box to make them emit these noises and control every bit of their movement. It shows just how hostile and scary the headcrab can be. Although it looks small and easy to stop, if this creature manages to latch onto your head, the outcome is horrific for the host, and the state of panic is further advanced by the security guard's comment. What the hell are these 
interesting. And why are they wearing science team uniforms? It's sad to realise that these things were once all scientists who were not prepared for the worst and succumbed to the head crab. As of now, you must get close to tackling them, as the game also forces the player to face their fears. It's hella unique to me, as most games give you a gun and let you have as much distance as you'd like with their first combat encounter, yet Half-Life gives you a rather strong enemy right off the bat as getting close to these things can result in them shedding off a lot of health if you're not careful with how their attacks work. You realise that the way you came in isn't an option to get out anymore, as the path is completely broken off and there's no tram in sight. So you must find a new way, seeing these once peaceful and regular hallways suddenly tainted with blood, rubble and hostile creatures is yet again another reason why this chapter is so amazing. What the level does is implement a completely new level design, truly opening up the facility for you and introducing new enemy types. Once again, the scientists are hiding and have no idea just how they're going to make it out of here alive. Once again highlighting just how hopeless this death trap known as Black Mesa has become. You also get to experience underground segments of the facility, which also shows the inner workings of the facility that Gordon originally wasn't supposed to see, and finding an elevator sets you to the next level. So yeah, that's unforeseen consequences. This chapter is perfect, as it thrusts you straight into the heart of danger and leaves you to it. The pacing and flow never leave you in one specific place at a time, and urges you to keep on moving. It encourages exploration as the entire place has gone to shit, so nothing is holding you back on inaccessible areas like the chapter before it. It's so unique with the world building and how the rest of the environment react to the disaster and gives the player a sense of urgency and distress. As the helpless scientists put their hopes on a man in a HEV suit wielding a crowbar. Thanks for watching, I've always wanted to dive into the expertise of this chapter, as it had me shitting my pants when I was 5 years old. My first impressions of Half-Life had me believing that this was just a boring walking simulator. That was before I entered the test chamber and completely fell in love with what this game had to offer. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing, it helps me out a lot. And if you like this style of content, I have many more videos that dive into my love and passion for video games and their levels. I'll see you in the next one.